Well, I always think of Dr. Leary's uh, marvelous advice, which was, when in doubt, double the dose. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, <clears throat> we did a very interesting survey, which was we surveyed about 370 people who had taken psilocybin, and, and in fact were more involved in that. They are actually <coughs> were people who were involved in attempting to grow it, 370 people. And that one of the questions in the questionnaire was, how much do you take? And the other question buried at some other portion of it was, uh, do you hear voices? And when you plot a sending dose, you discover that the more you take, the more likely you are to hear voices. And that I think this is the problem. You can have outrageous experiences and not have reached the core. And people always want to stop too soon and say, well, this is it. We're not going to get any higher. This is <laughs> fine, you know. And just very recently, I had an experience. Uh, someone who came to my Esalen thing that I did in February who uh, was also at a mushroom conference that I did last fall. And we've sort of had an ongoing discussion because he says, you don't give enough credit to LSD, and I don't understand what you mean by the vast differences between these things and this and that. So he called me the other day and said, uh, I finally got it. And now I'm a convert. I saw them, I heard them, I talked to them. And it was nine and a half grams necessary to put this guy into the correct perspective. Nine and a half grams is an appalling dose in my book. I mean, I've done eight grams and it's okay, you know, but you're way, way over the limit. So it, it is not the first phenomenon you counter, encounter, or the second, or the third, but down deep, this thing can come. And also, I've noticed with it, it is, uh, it has to be sort of invoked. Uh, the first time I ever encountered the voices was on the DMT flash, the very first time I smoked DMT. I mean, a friend of mine brought it to me, I remember it was a rainy evening in February of 60, uh, 66 and he came to my house and he was a very odd person to begin with and he said I have something you might be interested in I had just taken LSD for the first time six months before and was all gung-ho and I said oh wonderful what is it? he said it's a new drug great great drag it out what is it what do you do he said well I don't want to say too much about it let's just sit down and do it and he had this glass pipe and uh, I said I since I hadn't heard of it, I couldn't imagine it was going to be a bigger deal than LSD because I figured, you know, Life magazine keeps me informed of these things. <laughs> it's not going to take me by surprise. And I took a huge hit. And uh, in, it was, without a doubt, the greatest compressed moment of growth I ever hoped to go through in my <laughs> life. I mean, I stopped being a Marxist. I stopped. <laughs> being a materialist. I stopped being a rationalist. And it took, you know, what, five seconds? It just, it killed those things. It cauterized them. <laughs> it burned them out beyond any possibility of ever uh, <laughs> reconstructing them. Just they were gone. It, it, the, the evidence was too overwhelming, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and when I came down, I said, I can't believe it. And that was all I could say for about 20 minutes. It was like ideological shock. I said, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I just can't believe it. I said, well, keep doing it. You'll believe it. <laughs> but the, see, the truth was I could believe it. I couldn't stop believing it. And yet I had not been prepared. I had not thought that magic ruled the world from top to bottom, side to side, atom to atom, from first to last. It had just not been in my conception to conceive of that. But that's a very violent way to contact the Logos. What I notice on mushrooms is I come into the place where the potential exists and I can recognize it. It's when the hallucinations have made the transition from geometric to visionary, you say, aha, now we're getting close to the place. And then I call them, and I, 
and I, I think elf calling is actually a tradition in certain cultures. You set your mind in a certain way, and then you say, you know, I'm here. Come in, little green men. Come in, little green men. And it begins like a like a like a self um, like a self-driven thought a thing it's far away it's like the tinkling of bells it's the elf caravan it's coming <laughs> closer and closer say here I am come in come in and then usually a, a good deep hit of Mazari Sharif uh, hash at this point <laughs> will usually do the trick and you just take an enormous hit of hash clamp down on it close your eyes look deep in and they will it will there will be what Mercilion, God bless his heart, since he's not a psychedelico, what he calls a rupture of plane will occur. <laughs> this is what you're after, the rupture of plane. It means that you pass through a membrane of some sort and you're in a place. You mean a cognitive membrane that's holding you from seeing what's beyond? Yeah, you know, sort of like that. You're just like pushed through and uh, you see the, the tykes is the technical term that I evolved for them. The self-transforming machine elves that are singing in the hyperdimensional language. And they surround you and say, Welcome, we're so glad to see you. You come so rarely. It's so nice that you're here. We love you. And they're sort of climbing all over you. And, and this kidney thing. And after having experienced it many times, I'm convinced it's someone's idea of a, of a receiving area or playpen. It's someone very odd has the idea that this is a reassuring environment for human beings. And, and it, you have the feeling of being in a playpen. It's padded and there are these glittering fascinating, transforming things, and plus elves who could wish for more in a playpen. And the elves are playing with these things and saying, see what we're doing? See what we're doing? Do you want to do this? You can do this? Watch what we're doing. And they are speaking a language which is somehow puns, which are visual, which are multiply perceived by you on many levels. They are doing something, in other words, as 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 beyond language, as language is beyond the inarticulate croak of a loon, you know? And they're saying, you can do this. There's nothing special about this. Making objects with our voices, freestanding objects which are changing and transforming themselves, and in fact themselves beginning to sing and speak and produce more objects. We want you to do this. And because it will make you happy, because you will feel good. Isn't this a riot? Have you ever felt better in your life? And then, you know, the sinking back, the fading out, the, and they always, the final farewell, they sing, deja vu. <laughs>